Hello everyone and welcome to the robotics and mechatronics tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of robotics, mechatronics, control engineering and machine learning. This is the part 4 of the large tutorial on how to develop a low-cost differential wheeled robot that you can see over here that can carry advanced sensors such as lighters and cameras and that can be used for testing advanced machine learning, model-based control, estimation and SLAM algorithms. One of the most important goals is to integrate a complete system with Robot Operating System or ROS and advanced 3D visualization programs that can track robot in real time and that can display its position on the computer screen. In this tutorial, we explain how to develop and implement ROS and ROS Arduino nodes that are used for remotely controlling the robot and for remotely reading the sensor information, such as encoder readings. Encoders are over here. You can see them on the other side. These are two encoders, this one and this one over here. And as the wheel spins, you can see that the encoder LEDs are blinking. The remote connection is established by using a low-cost Bluetooth module HC06. Here's the Bluetooth module. Then, the Linux machine, shown over here, runs two nodes. The first is the ROS node that is used to publish the control velocities for two motors. You can see it over here. And over here I can enter and change the motor velocities. To illustrate this communication and this type of control, let us change the motor velocities. First, I will change the left motor velocity by entering the number over here. For example, I will specify 200. Enter. And for the right motor, I will also specify 200. And before I press enter, over here we can immediately see the effect of changing the velocity. Now I'm pressing enter. Press. And you can immediately see that the motor is spinning much faster. And also over here you can see encoder readings that are sent remotely. You can see much faster spinning. Motor spinning is too noisy for this video. Consequently, I will change the values to original. Values 50 and 50. And good. My Linux machine is remotely running the second node shown over here. This node actually receives encoder readings from Arduino and it plots them on the screens. On the other hand, ROS is also running on Arduino. On Arduino, we implemented a ROS node that receives control information from the Linux ROS node that is, the ROS Arduino node receives the desired control velocities for motors. Then, the Arduino ROS node implements these control actions. That is, it sends control actions for this motor driver over here. The motor driver controls these two DC motors. The ROS node implemented in Arduino transmits detected pulses, namely encoders are counting pulses. These pulses are then transmitted to our Linux machine and they are displayed on the screen by another Linux ROS node. Everything that you can see over here is a proof of principle for more advanced control algorithm that we will develop and implement in the future. The ROS node running on a Linux machine will use the encoder positions to calculate the current position and orientation of our robot in space. Then it will plot this position in RVIS and it will use this information to design and implement a feedback control algorithm for our robot. For example, this feedback control algorithm will be used to control the robot position in space or to ensure that the robot is following the desired trajectory or in the second phase of this project, we will integrate the complete system with Raspberry Pi 
and possibly with NVIDIA Jetson Nano controllers. In that way, we will add an additional layer of complexity and more capabilities to our system. The goal is to have a SLAM system over here, that is, we will need a lighter and we will need probably a camera. Before I start with explanations, I have to mention the following. Before watching this video tutorial, you need to watch several other tutorials I created and that explain how to control the motors from Arduino, how to install encoders and read encoder information from Arduino, and how to establish a Bluetooth communication between Arduino and Linux machine. Also, you should watch tutorials on how to establish a ROS Arduino node and how to implement this node and to communicate with this node in real time. Links to these tutorials are given in the description below this video tutorial. Secondly, all the codes developed and explained in this video tutorial are posted on my web page and on my GitHub page. The links are provided in the description below this tutorial. Finally, it took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as more than 300 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's start. Since there are a lot of things that need to be explained, I will split this video tutorial into two parts. In the first part, I will explain and I will develop the code and in the second part, I will explain the wiring diagram for Arduino for Bluetooth connection and I will give some additional comments on how to establish the connection. The first step is to create a workspace and to create a package inside of that workspace. I explained this first step a number of times in my previous video tutorials and consequently I will quickly go over this step. First, we need to create a folder for our workspace. To do that, we will open a terminal and we will type. This command will create the folder ROS Remote Workspace and inside of that folder it will create source folder. Perfect. Now, let's go to our new folder. Okay. Then, let's create our workspace by running catkin make. Perfect. Here it is. Next, we always need to source our workspace such that we can execute command and such that we can run our package. Don't forget to do that. Then let's create our package. To create the package, we will go to the source folder. And in the source folder, we will create our package. To create the package, we need to call this command. Catkin create package is the command for creating the package. The name of the package will be ROS remote package and it will depend on standard message ROSPI and ROSCPP. Standard message ROSPI and ROSCPP are standard ROS packages that I will automatically include in my package. Let's do that. Here it is. Okay. The next step is to write Python publisher and subscriber nodes. However, before we do that, we need to understand the global picture. And here it is. This slide explains what we need to implement. Over here, we have a Python publisher. This Python publisher is actually a script. This script publishes velocity commands to the topics left motor velocity, right motor velocity. That is, the user enters the values for the left motor velocity and the right motor, motor velocity. And then this publisher takes these values and publish them to these two topics. Then, on the other side, we have Arduino. And between the publisher and Arduino, we have ROS master. Arduino subscribes to the topics left motor velocity, right motor velocity, and receives velocity commands. Then it runs the motors. Also, Arduino continuously publishes encoder readings to the topics left encoder pulses, right encoder pulses. 
So what's happening there? We have encoders, and encoders are counting pulses. That is, steps of revolving boat wheels. We count these steps. Then, we continuously publish the ticks, that is, the encoder readings, to our topics, left encoder pulses, right encoder pulses. Then, we have another Python script that's called Python Subscriber and that's implemented on my Linux machine. This script subscribes to the topics left encoder pulse, right encoder pulses, and it prints the encoder readings to the screen. Next, let's create the publisher node. For that purpose, we need to go to this folder. Okay, next, we need to create an empty file. Here's the file for our publisher. Here's our publisher. Every Python file in ROS should start with this line. Don't forget to enter this line. Then we import ROSPy. We expect to send integer messages. This is because velocities are in the range from 0 to 255. Consequently, we need a data structure, that is, a ROS data structure that will enable us to send integer messages. And the name of this data structure is integer32. This is our node name. And over here, we specify the topic names. We have two topics. We have one topic for the left motor velocity and one topic for the right motor velocity. Topics can be seen as channels through which we communicate between different ROS nodes. One ROS node is this publisher node. On the other side, there is a ROS node implemented in Arduino. And we communicate between these two nodes by sending messages through these two topics. Here, you need to make sure that in Arduino code, you use the same name for the topics. That is, if the publisher uses left motor velocity as a topic, the subscriber on the Arduino side need to also use left motor velocity. The same hold true for the right motor velocity. Here we initialize our subscriber node. Over here we are actually saying that our node is publishing messages to the specified topic names. That is, we call the rospy.publisher we specify the topic name, defined over here. We specify the type of messages that we will send, integer 32, and we specify the buffer size. We do the same thing for the right motor. We specify the topic name, type of message, and the buffer size. Over here, we specify the frequency of publishing the messages. That is, we publish the messages with 1 hertz. However, in this version of code, I'm actually waiting for the user to enter the values, so I'm not publishing with 1 hertz. However, I'm still using this in order to add some delay in my code. Over here are the values that the user will enter. I have left motor and I set it to 0, and I have a right motor velocity and I set it to 0. In this while loop, I'm actually reading the values specified by the user, these two lines, and I'm simply publishing the red values, that is left motor, right motor, these are integer, uh, integers, I simply publish them through this topic. Over here, I use the shortcut. Notice that I'm directly sending integers. However, we expect to send integer 32. It's a data structure, actually. However, ROS is automatically converting integers to int32 data structure. However, you can actually do it explicitly by defining a variable of type int32, and over here you will specify something like this. For example, the variable previously defined is of data type int32, and over here you will simply say, for example, left motor, 32 dot data is equal to left motor and you will simply then say something like this publisher 
left motor publish and you will publish the complete int32 data structure. However, I'm trying to keep this code as short as possible and that's why I use this version of the code. And that's it. That's our publisher. Save the file, close this window and go back to the terminal. Next, let's create our subscriber. You need to repeat gedit and over here you need to specify the file name. Let's call it subscriber. Here is our subscriber node. Again, let's look at the global picture. We are writing this piece of code. This script should subscribe to these topics, left encoder pulses, right encoder pulses, and through these topics we expect to receive the encoder ticks, that is the encoder pulses. And finally we print the encoder readings to the screen. Let's go back to the code. Again, we import ROSPI, we expect to receive IN32, and we basically need to import IN32. Then. This is the name of the node, and here are the topic names, left encoder pulses and right encoder pulses, and make sure that in Arduino code you're actually using these topic names, since in Arduino we will implement a publisher that will publish encoder readings to these two topics. Here are our callback functions. The callback functions are called every time a message is received through a topic. So what do we do? We simply take the message and we print it out to the screen. That is, it, we print out its numerical value that's specified over here. We do that for the left and for the right motor. Over here we initialize our subscriber node. Nothing special about this piece of code. Over here we are basically saying that we are subscribing to these two topics topic name left encoder and topic name right encoder that are defined over here we expect to receive integer 32 and once we receive the integer 32 values we call callback functions and here they are we simply print the values to the screen and finally we spin the code that is this command will make sure that the complete code is running in a loop perfect save and that's our subscriber node. Close this window. Let's go back to the terminal. Let's see what's happening over here. Aha, uh -huh. we have publisher Arduino and subscriber Arduino. However, we cannot execute these two files. To execute these two files, we need to set the appropriate permission rights. We need to type chmode and the name of the file. The same thing we need to do for the subscriber. Here it is. And that's it. The next step is to create and upload the Arduino code. Let's write the Arduino code. Okay, let's open Arduino. Here it is. If you don't know how to install Arduino, I actually created a video tutorial that explains how to install Arduino on a Linux machine. A link is given in the description below. So I will simply copy and paste the code I previously wrote. Here it is. It's a bit lengthy code, however it has to be lengthy since we are actually implemented a complete firmware. The first step is to import the header files. The first header file is ROS.h. This is the header file of the ROS serial Arduino library. I created a video tutorial that explains how to use this library and my advice is to stop now and to watch this tutorial before you continue to watch the current video tutorial. A link to that video tutorial is provided in the description below. Next, we need to import this IN32 header file. That's the header file that contains definitions of the IN32 data structure. Over here, we define the Arduino pins. The second part of this video tutorial will be dedicated to the complete wiring diagram and I will explain all these pins in that second part. For the time being, I'll just briefly go over the pins. We have two encoders. 
we have the first encoder and the second encoder, left and right, and they are attached to the pins 2 and 3. These pins are actually, actually the interrupt pins. That is, you cannot attach the encoders to an arbitrary pin. The pin has to be an interrupt pin. Keep in mind that. Over here, we can see right and left motor pins. The right motor is attached to the pins 9, 10, 11, and the left motor is attached to the pins 5, 6, and 7. Over here are Arduino global variables and global objects. These two variables are used to store the total pulses for the left and the right motor. That is, these are the encoder readings. Over here are the motor velocities. We have left motor velocity and right motor, motor velocities. These values are actually filled in on the basis of information sent by Linux machine. That is our publisher. Let's go back again. Here's our publisher. Sends left motor velocity and right motor velocity through these two topics and Arduino reads them and it fills these two variables. And later on, we will simply send these two variables to the motor driver. Over here are the ROS variables, functions, and objects. This is the handle of the ROS node. This is the callback function for the left motor. Namely, once the message is received, we need to call an appropriate callback function. And the name of the first callback function is callback function motor left. It will accept integers and over here it's basically filling in the values. That is, this is the message being received. And what do we do inside of this callback function? We take the values stored in this message and we simply assign it to our motor velocity. We do the same thing for the right motor. We expect to receive integer 32. And over here is the message. We extract the data from the message, the value from 0 to 255 that specifies the motor velocity, and we assign it to the motor velocity right. OK, next we need to define the publishers. We need to send the encoder pulses, that is the total number of encoder pulses. Consequently, we define the publisher. This is the topic name, left encoder pulses, and we have also the right encoder pulses. We have two topics. It's very important to make sure that these topics are precisely the topics that you specified in Linux Scriber. This is very important. And over here, we need to specify the subscribers for the left and right motor velocities. The topic name for the left motor is left motor velocity, and here's the callback function. Let's go back to that callback function again. The callback function accepts the message, extracts the data, and assigns it to the motor velocity. The same thing is happening for the right motor. Here is the subscriber. It subscribes itself to the right motor velocity, and here is the callback function. Once the message is there, here it is, we extract the value and we assign the value to the motor velocity right. Here's our setup function. We set the encoder pins, then we attach the interrupts for tracking the pulses. This is very important since the interrupts are more or less working independently from our main code that runs in a loop. What's happening over here? This is the name of the function for the left encoder interrupt. This is the name of the function for the right encoder interrupt. Once the pulse is being detected, that is, once the motion is being detected, this function is being called. Let's see this function. This function is given at the end of the code. Here it is. This is the interrupt function left. Once the pulse from the encoder is detected, we simply increment the total value of pulses. We do the, the same thing 
for the right motor and this is the interrupt function for the right encoder once motion on the right encoder is detected we simply increment the total pulses now note over here that I'm always incrementing the pulses in one direction that is I'm not taking into account if your motor is spinning in the forward or in the backward direction I'm always incrementing the pulse for one and you have to keep in mind and you have to correct that that is you have to take into account the motor direction however I didn't do it in this video tutorial since I want to make the code to be as simple as possible but keep in mind that thing over here we attach the left motor and we attach the right motor we set all the motors to off this is very important over here we set up ROS variables objects etc we set the baud rate the baud rate of our serial communication is 9600 this baud rate should actually correspond to the baud rate of the HC06 Bluetooth device to repeat this baud rate should match the baud rate of our Bluetooth communication device in my case I defined on my Bluetooth device the baud rate to be 9600 and over here I need to tell to this handle that is to the raw serial handle to set the proper baud rate otherwise the code will not work here we initialize the ROS node here we say what are the publishers and subscribers and that's it that's our setup function let's continue here is the loop what happens over here we spin our node that is we are saying okay execute the node initialize the node over here what's happening messages are coming from our Python publisher and these messages are left motor velocity and right motor velocity then what's what is happening inside of the code these variables are being filled in where well the callback functions are being called and let's find the callback functions here they are so once the message is here this variable that was initially 0 becomes for example 200 here I assume that the user sent 200 then what's happening over here we do analog write this is Arduino function to our motor driver the velocity this is a pulse width modulation velocity we do that for the left and the right motor and over here we set the direction of the motor we always spin the motor in the in one direction since I don't want to make this video tutorial too complex I just I'm just spinning the motor in a single direction and finally what's happening over here we read the encoder values however these encoder values are actually read by these interrupt functions and note over here that I'm not calling explicitly the interrupt functions they're being called in the background however these functions automatically increment these variables right then left encoder ROS is int32 data type variable that's used to transmit back information from ROS actually from Arduino to our Python subscriber and over here we fill in the data field we specified the data field to be equal to total pulses left and the same thing for the right encoder total pulses right and over here we are simply publishing the two messages and I'm delaying my code for five milliseconds over here are the interrupt functions that I explained previously and that's it it's next we need to upload the code and here you should be very careful you will first need a USB cable you'll need to connect your computer with your Arduino later on we will not be using the USB cable we will be using the Bluetooth communication however for the time being you need to upload this code the first step is to verify the port okay I can see that on this port Arduino Mega that's my microcontroller is attached over here you need to verify that the board name is correct it's not correct so I need to specify Arduino Mega now here is the most important comment note over here 
that you cannot see any function any kind of global variable defining this the Bluetooth communication this is very important to keep in mind the only place where you can see something about communication is this part over here this library will actually automatically handle serial communication by using the Bluetooth however you have to connect your HC06 Bluetooth adapter pins to the proper Arduino pins. I will explain this in more details in my next tutorial, however, you just have to keep in mind the RX0 and TX0 pins of HC06 should be connected to 0 and 1 pins of Arduino. Keep in mind that. Keep in mind that. If you attach it to any other pin, the code will not work. Another very important comment. When uploading this sketch, that is this code to your Arduino, you have to disconnect RX and TX wires that are connecting HC06 from your Arduino. You need to do that since the serial port that's used to upload this sketch is actually using RX0 and TX1. So keep in mind that. So I disconnected my HC06 Bluetooth adapter from Arduino so I can upload the code. However, let's first verify the code. Compiling the sketch, done compiling. And finally, let's upload the code. Let's see what will happen. Uploading, uploading. Now, if you look at your HC06 Bluetooth module, you will notice that the Bluetooth module is actually blinking. This means that the connection between our Linux machine and the Bluetooth module is not established. Okay, we need to do that. However, before you do that, you can safely unplug your USB cable that connects Arduino with your computer and you can power up your Arduino by using a local 9-volt battery. I did that and now my computer is completely detached from my Arduino and my robot. That is, there is no physical connection anymore. Let's close our Arduino. Over here, click on Start and let's search for Bluetooth. Here it is. Okay, now, my HC06 device is already paired. However, to illustrate the complete connection process, I will remove the device. Remove. Okay. Now, over here, I can see HC06. I click on HC06 and let's set it up. Let's click on HC06. Let's see what will happen. You can see that this small circle is revolving and here is the connection window. We need to specify the pin. Usually the pin for the device HC06 is 1, 2, 3, 4. However, if you played with this device, you might reset this pin or you might set the pin such that you kind of prevent hackers or you prevent other people to access your Bluetooth connection. My advice is to try to change the Bluetooth pin and to use some other pin that only you know. However, I will be using the standard pin. And let's click on confirm. Let's see what will happen. After you enter the pin and you double click, you might see this disconnect or, or paired. However, the most important thing is the address. Later on, you will see over here that the device is being paired. It just takes some time to refresh and we will also need to do a few additional steps. Remember this address. This is a very important parameter that we will need to enter in the SQL. Okay, so let's perform the next step. The next step is to initialize the Bluetooth connection from a Linux terminal. Consequently, let's close our original Linux terminal and let's open a new terminal. In this new terminal, we need to type this command. Let's do that. 
Over here, we are specifying the port name and we specify the address. Now, this address should perfectly match the address shown over here and you should keep in mind that 98DA60082F9F. Perfect. And press enter. And let's hope that everything will work as it should work. Enter the password and let's see. Take some time and here it is. We are connected. Now, if you look at your HC06 device, you can see that the, the device is not blinking anymore. That is, it's continuously shining. The LED is continuously shining. This means that you actually established the connection. And you can see over here, connected. Per the next step is to run ROS Core. That is, to start ROS Master. So you open a new terminal and you type ROS Core. And this command will start ROS master. Here it is. To repeat, every time you run something in ROS, that is, you run a serial communication or you want to run a node, you need to open a terminal and you need to type ROS core. Perfect. Let's continue. The next step is actually to establish the serial connection. To do that, we need to use this command. Open a new terminal and in this new terminal type this command ROS run this is the package name this is the name of the file this is the port number and this port number or port name should completely match the port name given over here and you need to set the baud rate the baud rate should match the baud rate of the Arduino ROS node and the baud rate of Arduino ROS node should match the default baud rate of HC06 Bluetooth device and let's hope that everything works however double check this thing when you uploaded the Arduino code by using the standard cable USB serial connection I mentioned that you need to discon disconnect RX0 and TX1 pins from your Bluetooth device now before you run this command you actually need to connect your HC06 to Arduino. That is, you need to connect RX0 and TX1. So do that and then run this command. Let's see. Requesting topics and voila! Here it is. The connection is being established. How I know that? Because I can see the topics. I can see the publishers, left encoder pulses, and I can see the subscribers, left motor velocity and right motor velocity perfect however let us try to verify that we actually see all the topics open a new terminal and in this new terminal type ROS topic list so let's list all the topics perfect I'm seeing left encoder pulses left motor velocity right encoder pulses and right motor velocity awesome Next, we need to run the subscriber node. To do that, we first need to open a new terminal. And in this new terminal, we need to first source our workspace. This is the first step. Don't forget this step. Then, by typing this command, we will actually run our node. Rostran, the name of the package, and the name of the node that is the name of the python file and here it is rostran let's now wait a little bit however nothing is happening aha uh -huh, here it is let me move a little bit the motor okay i can detect the pulses perfect okay the final step is to run our publisher node that is let's try to move the motors open a new window and in this new window, again, you need to source the workspace, that is our environment. And then finally, let's run our publisher. Here it is. Okay, enter left motor velocity. Hmm. Let's do, let's say, 150. And for the right one, let's do 150. And let's press enter. And here it is. You can hear it, actually, that my motors are moving. Let's do something like this, 50, 50, 
and I should like do zero and zero. Do it again, and it should stop after some time. Okay, perfect. That would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.